Welcome everyone, I'm excited to finally be doing this combat achievement video. The only thing I won't be including are the KC tasks as my previous video covered the basic mechanic. So for this video, I'd recommend you at least have the rotations memorized first. And before we jump into things, I'll be trying a slightly different format that's a bit more relaxed, but hopefully still to the point. As usual, check the timestamps in the description or the progress bar to skip around as you like. I'll be taking these tasks from easiest to hardest. And as usual, if you like the video, please drop a like and consider subscribing. So first up, Snake Rebound, killing Zolwar with Vengeance. There's not a lot to say here except that you'll need 94 magic. If you don't have it, you can boost with a Magic Pot, Ancient Brew, or Imbued Heart. Otherwise, put Ashtol's Earth and Death Runes in your Rune Pouch. If you're on the Tanzanite phase, the basic trick is just to wait for Zolwar to send out a range attack and then activate Vengeance before you get hit. This will ensure that a Snakeling doesn't soak up the hit instead. If you're on the Serpentine phase, simply deactivate your range prayer and wait for a hit. You can't actually Vengeance on the Magma phase, so you'll have to wait. If you're on Jad phase, then instead of swapping prayers, simply allow yourself to get hit. This one's probably the easiest and most straightforward. Now for the triple snake kill. You'll need black chins. I prefer to do this on the tanzanite phase. So ignoring my prayers, chuck a chin at the first spawn as soon as it lands and turn your attention over to the next one. You'll get a double kill resulting in the achievement. Now, if for some reason this doesn't work, you can actually do this on any phase. Just unequip your ring of recoil or suffering, wait for three snakes to hurtle together, and you're good to go. There's also a place on the perfect Zolra kill that'll get you the triple kill as well, so no worries. Now for the perfect kill. This requires us to get a kill without taking any damage from a Snakeling, Cloud, Magma, or Serpentine phase. Again, we'll be using the Tanzanite phase for this challenge. Now for this one, you'll want Black Chins and a Blowpipe. In my inventory, I also have a Crystal Bow, but you can use your Toxic Trident instead. If you want, you can bring the Bullfire Twisted Bow, but don't bank your Blowpipe. You can replace the two Prayer Pots I have at the bottom with more fish if you'd like. I simply have them here to refill my prayer instead of constantly teleporting back to my POH. Obviously I have Ancestral here, but I've run this several times using Arams, but I recently upgraded so I don't have it. I use a Book of the Undead since we'll need Thralls, so I just don't bother not equipping that. I have a Face Guard, more than welcome to take a simple Neznot, or if you have it, take an Ancestral Mage Hat, whatever works for you. The Assembler, obviously you can downgrade if you don't have that, you're going to want the Trident. Can downgrade to Tortures, just Camp Barrows if you don't want to deal with a Glove Swap. Same with boots, I have Eternals, you're more than welcome to camp Dehide boots and just get rid of a boot swap altogether, up to you. Since we're not actually relying on killing the Snakelings with recoils, you don't need it, so I put a Sears ring here. Again, literally do whatever you want with that. All right, now we're on to our perfect kill. So I had to go back and find an earlier clip where I killed it slightly slower, which you'll get to. So you see me in Arams and not Ancestral, but like I said, you can do this in Ancestral. Probably do it in Mystic, to be honest. But you're going for the Tanzanite phase. So if you don't get it, you're going to want to log out, log back in. If you log out before you get attacked, this will put you right outside the boat instead of teleporting and running all the way back. So it's just a little bit quicker. Now for this, I'm going to pause this clip. I'm actually standing in the wrong tile. So we're going to flip to another clip, and this is the tile you should be standing on. Now the purpose for this is that the first snakeling that comes out, you'll be immune to it. If it's magic, it'll just magic you, but you're protecting it. If it's melee, it won't come at you. So you're going to chuck a chin at the first two, chuck a chin at that back one, and then go back on your blowpipe and get that first chin that you're safe spotted. From here, you want to start making your way over and going to your gear. And then you just kind of chill out with balls for a bit. Now from here, once it starts throwing out magic clouds, I like to swap my gear, run to this back pile. This will help uh, safe spot you a bit. So get the first snakeling, go back on Zora or just wait, but get the second one. And then you've got a couple stragglers that will slowly come with you. So there's the third one, and boom, there's the fourth one. Junzi actually hit a zero there. Then you just want to equip your gear and run over. You can attack, not attack, whatever you want. Just note this tile that I'm standing on is actually a safe spot. So if you get here early, there's no reason to move off this tile. This phase is pretty easy, Zora only attacks. Now from here, I like to get in two magic attacks and then gear swap. If you think you're slow or you're a little worried about it, you can always just lose DPS and gear swap now. But you're going to want to take that chin out with your blowpipe, take that chin out, then you're going to want to swap to your black chins. And I actually misclick. You want to be one tile over specifically on the tile that I have marked. That will help all of the chins corner around 
and you'll one-shot them. And I'll flip and show another clip specifically for that. And then as you can see, just blowpipe any stragglers. Uh, I think if you click right, that one will actually get stays body. Don't worry about it. But basically, blowpipe, blowpipe, back on boss, blowpipe more. Now, as you can see, he's magic. Yeah, that could have been a fail chance because I swapped too early. Now, this is the reason I brought the crystal bow, but you can use the trident. If that one is magic, you're praying rage, fail chance. If you're praying melee, or, you know, there's just a lot of risk if you're running up to it. So I like to run back, wait for it to around the corner, bring the crystal bow, use a chin, use your trident, whatever makes you feel better. But you just want to owl range it. You're good to go. And from there, that's the kill. After this phase, I believe it's the Jad phase, but from there you're done. Alright, now we're on to the speedrunning section, and I'll be honest, this is the main reason I've gone so long without doing this video. I just still haven't come up with a good way to do this section. But, here's what I've decided. These combat videos will be specifically up to the master challenges only. Depending on the boss, I may do unique grandmasters, but those will be extra, not a core focus. My reasoning for this is there's already a great speedrunning community for Grandmaster Challenges, and honestly, they're high tier quality. They're much better people than me. So for Zora, I'll try and showcase some of the points where I struggled and things that I had to learn, and hopefully that can help you prepare for the speedrunning challenges themselves. That said, please, please let me know what you think down in the comments. Should I keep exploring ways to make this better? Do you have suggestions? Or should I just be like, hey guys, this is the video I used. Go check it out. All right, up to you guys. Let's see what you like. Anyways, um, I'm not inventing anything new. I used Kirby speedrunning video to help me get started, so this is what I will link down in the description. Okay, now we're ready to actually get started, but one thing I always try and think about is what's the least amount of gear that you actually need to get this done? Now, our goal, of course, is the sub one minute. So, of course, you could do it with something like a Twisted Bow or Bow of Fair Didn't, which actually can pull a sub one minute doing range only and nothing else. Add in Thralls, Vengeance, you know, the other tricks in the book you can get it fairly okay. Now the blowpipe and trident should be sufficient provided your levels are okay. But as a general rule of thumb, gear and skill reduce the amount of RNG needed. Obviously a twisted bow will pull a sub one minute more often than a bow fun, so on. And the higher your skill, the less attacks and ticks that you're missing, so overall just higher DPS, right? Now, if you're just going for the elite challenge of one minute 20 seconds, then I'd recommend using the same strat and adjusting gear as necessary. So you have a couple of ways you can go about this. You can look up and learn four different speedrunning strats. You can just run it in a standard way for all of them and just hope you get the timer. Or you can do what I did and stick to one specific rotation and just go all out. It's up to you, really. All right, now on to gear and inventory. It should be noted that I chose to just camp the Tanzanite phase and didn't bother learning the others because personally I found my ma magic DPS to be quite weak on the melee phase and I just really didn't want to put up with that. So I just camped Tanzanite phase, even though it is the least common phase that you'll see. Now, obviously, of course, as I said, if you don't have the gear I do, just downgrade. If you're not comfortable with the six to seven way swap, you could reduce something like gloves, boots, or a helmet, and, you know, just do what you can. I take dragon knives and buckler per the suggestion by Kirby. I have enough runes for vengeance and thralls, which means I'll be using vengeance, spellbook swap, and thralls. I think that's 94 magic requirement there. So yeah, let's just jump right into it. All right, so the very first thing I had to learn was making sure I got full five hits. So you start in your mage gear, you right click the boss, and as soon as your camera angle swaps, you hit attack, and then you immediately go to your range gear, and boom. Now, if you're using a twisted bow and a botha, this will apply. If you're only using the trident, you'll get the full five attacks because it's a four tick, not a five tick weapon. So this is what you're gonna have to learn to do consistently it can be a little tricky but honestly it's not that hard just right click wait for that camera angle hit attack and you should be able to do it every time that last tick you want to put it on accurate and then back to rapid and that's the very first thing that i kind of had to practice was that was a bit tricky now this is where you would swap to your dragon knives and buckler and then you just waste all your specs and you go back to the then you go to the blowpipe actually and then you just do that. And if you're smart, you would drink the anti-venom a lot sooner than I did. Now, as soon as these disappear, you're supposed to start running. So you go tile, click, blah, blah, blah. But I actually should have gone to that center yellow square, not the square I did. So I could get into this position faster because I actually lost a full attack here. 
and then you pillar stall. So I have these tiles gray that are marked. You just go back and forth like this, and that's called pillar stalling. It helps you. So here I actually lost an attack. I was supposed to swap here fast enough where I actually got a shot in with a T-boat because that's for the Grandmaster challenge. You kind of have to kill Zolra there. And then boom, that is the Master challenge. So as you can see, I could have gotten it because I lost two attacks for Grandmaster anyways, right? And so that's the master kill. As you can see, it's a bit of a time crunch. If you want Grandmaster, you have to kill Zolra on that previous Serpentine phase, which is a bit of a time crunch, to be honest. And then for this Tanzanite phase here, I think you have two to three attacks. Then you're then you'll get it. If you miss it, then you're up for the elite. Now, if Zolra dips on this Tanzanite phase, you will miss the elite challenge. You might prefer to do a different phase, different rotation but I just found this one to be the easiest and most consistent of the four phases, just being my overall experience, but it is the least common, so you'll be logging in and out quite a bit. Now, the areas where I needed to improve, one, remembering to actually use the imbued heart and revengeancing, I actually ended up selling the heart off because I never remembered to use it. And then the probably the single hardest point was making sure I was in place swapping gear fast enough. So when I was going from Tanzanite to Serpentine, I actually missed an attack because I was slow on the running, positioning, and swapping my gear. And then third would be when you're on the Serpentine, you run forward to get that last Tebow shot in. I didn't actually get my gear on fast enough to get a Tebow shot, right? So those are two areas where I missed a couple of attacks. Had I gotten those in properly, I might have been able to get the Grandmaster time. Thanks for watching guys, I hope the video helps. As usual, if bossing is ever too difficult, you can always go RuneCraft instead.